Welcome into the September 14th episode of the Locked on These podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. The Maple Leafs announced their prospect tournament roster today. We detail some of the big names who will and won't be there this weekend. And we'll play one of our favorite bits, cosign, no sign. It's all coming up on today's edition of Locked on Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome to the Locked On Leafs podcast, your one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me is my co-host, Dave Morissuti from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leafs-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free wherever you get your podcasts from. And you can also now catch us up on video format. Go search us up on YouTube if you haven't already. Subscribe. Hit up Lockdown Leafs and subscribe on YouTube. David, how are you on this Wednesday morning? Not too bad. Not too bad. We're uh, it's funny because we recorded our episode. We talk about oh, we'll see when the roster for the rookie <laughs> tournament gets announced. I'm Maybe. literally just about to post, and you send me the t- <laughs> you send me the link saying oh yeah, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> Classic, right? Like, doesn't like Dangle always says that too? Every time they stop recording, news breaks. And we even said that, like, oh, yeah. Like, if you listen to yesterday's podcast towards the end, we talked about the prospect tournament that's upcoming and it starts tomorrow, Thursday. They're taking on uh, the Dallas Stars in game one. They're also going to play uh, Friday, Sunday, and Monday. They're going to play Columbus, uh, St. Louis, and Detroit also this weekend. And it all starts tomorrow, as I said. But we were just discussing how the roster hadn't come out yet. And it was 48 hours until puck drop of this tournament. And we thought it was a little weird that the roster hadn't come out. We were both scouring the internet, trying to find it. Lo and behold, legitimately, maybe at most 20 minutes after we log off, sign off and go on, uh, go on with our day. I see that the Maple Leafs announced the roster. I'm like, Oh, come on. <laughs> we wanted that 20 minutes ago, but it's okay. That means that we can bring it to y'all today so why don't we pull up the the graphic here of uh, the the entire roster that will be going to uh that's going to be going to traverse city uh with the toronto maple leaf so there are some very notable names on this list some names that'll be very familiar because well they played with the maple Leafs last year you're looking at nick abruzzese you're looking at alex steves um i believe nick robertson is also going to be there yes there he is right there and then defensively, did Crawl get a shot with the team? Yep. No. Did he? Did he play yeah. a game with the team last year? Uh, wait, with the Leafs last it year? Rubens. No, it was Rubens who played with them okay. last year, right? So, yeah, so he didn't get a shot. But he's a name who's kind of been around a little bit. Uh, if you watch the the, the CHL um, playoffs and you, you watch the Memorial Cup, William Villeneuve uh, is a player who ended up winning the, the Memorial Cup with St. John's. So, uh, you know, there's some notable names that are there. And also this year's second round pick is also going to be at the tournament. Uh, Fraser Minton. So there are some names here that are are going to be there that we're excited to see. But before we get to the ones that are going to be there, some notable omissions that aren't going to be here for reasons that, well, I mean, they're in school, right? Like a lot of the NCAA players um, do not actually come to this tournament. So you're not going to see Matthew Nyes at this tournament. You're not going to see Ryan Deverberg at this tournament and, and other guys who are playing in the NCAA or playing overseas and were, were not uh, able to, to come to this tournament. So, you know, those are just a couple of the big ones that won't be here, which is unfortunate because, you know, I, I want to watch Matthew Nyes play in a Maple Leafs uniform as much as I possibly can and just unable to do it at the these tournaments. But it'd be nice to if, if they were able to kind of get away for the weekend, right? Like, it's just a weekend. It's a little long weekend. Come on, let them go play. Yeah, it's a little interesting uh, that they can, that usually they don't. I know that training camp's important for the college team because it's such a short season. They don't have a lot of, you know, on schools, I guess, somewhat important. Yeah, but what gets you more fired up and ready to go than 
real action against other teams as opposed to just practice. Talk about practice, Dave. Practice. This is true. You know what's an interesting name that's not on their own? Um, is Mikhail Ab- Abramov. Yeah, yeah, it is. Because I think yesterday we mentioned, like, he, he should be there. He probably will be there. Looks like he's not. And it's interesting, too. Do you know what the cutoff is for these tournaments? I actually don't, um, to be honest with you. Because I think, like, Keith Petruzzelli, 23, 24 years old, he's going to be there. You've got Nick Robertson, who's been in the system now, it seems like, forever. SDA has been in the system for a few years he's here. 20, he's the same age as Abramov. So. Alex Steves is 24 years old as well. Like, you've got some some older guys. I, I don't even know what the age cutoff is for a prospect tournament, mm-hmm. but it is kind of perplexing that Abramov is, is not a guy who decided to, to come and play in this tournament. I guess he feels he might have a – a crack at the main roster, and that's why he's gearing up for main camp, which also starts next week and didn't want to risk an injury. That Could might be the, the only other explanation, I guess, for why Abramov wouldn't be there. Yeah, I think even like the Sens, when they put out their roster, like Ridley Gregg was on the roster, but he's actually not. Yeah, he's hurt. Play. He's not going to play, yeah. So, like, maybe that's the reason they just said, well, if he's – Again, I, we don't know his whole story. Maybe that'll be something that whoever is covering the tournament could ask the coaching staff. Well, I spoke with uh, Ross Levitan, who is the host of Locked On Senators on the Locked On NHL show that we do every Tuesday, focus on the Eastern Conference, uh, Eastern Conference. And we we're talking about the different prospect tournaments and, and we were talking about the Leafs and the Sens. And he's, he said that really, Greg, though being named to the tournament roster, not expected to play. So uh, he's traveling with the team to be there, camaraderie, but definitely not expected to play after sustaining his injury at uh, the World Juniors this past August. Not December or January, but August. Yeah, remember there was that random tournament midway through August? Yeah, I don't either, but it happened, folks. It happened. And Canada won gold, so. I call it the Mason McTavish tournament. Pretty much that's what it was. It was the McTavish show, and Bedard early on flashed. But really, it was yeah, Mason, uh, Mason Mc, Mc, McGorgeous, perhaps McMagnificent, maybe. Uh, working title, working title for uh, for Mason McTavish. But yeah, so if you're watching on YouTube, you can look at and, and see all the names that are going to be uh, there. I guess we can name them off uh, if we wanted to. If we want to, or you know what? Instead of naming off a bunch of names. Why don't we, we could post this. Uh, we're going to post this on our Twitter page at yeah. Lockdown Lease. We'll post this graphic there. You can go check out the names if you're listening. Uh, so you can go follow us on Twitter at Locked On Leafs and find out all the names that are going to be there. Uh, but you in particular said you have a favorite. I know tomorrow's episode, a little bit of a, a tease for tomorrow. We're going to do a top five players that we're keen on watching for this tournament. Um, But there's one in particular that you want to watch, not necessarily because you think he's going to become the next Nick Lidstrom, but because you love the name. Tell me all about it, pal. Okay. I can't be the only one that saw Noah Van. It's got to be Van Vliet, right? (laughs) I'm sorry. I'll be honest. I don't know how it's pronounced. It's Van uh, space V L I E T. So, you know, Fred Van Vliet, it's V-L-E-E-T, right? So it's pretty, you know what it is. Could this be Van Vliet? I, may, I don't know. But for the purposes of this show and for the purposes of, you know, your heart and you wanting to have fun, you know, a little heart, yeah. uh, at heart, let's go with Noah Van Vliet until uh, until we hear otherwise. Exactly. He is a Van, he is Van Vliet of the Leafs. It's, that's the coolest thing. Why would I would be number twenty three though. That that's where I'm, I'm like, dude. If you're gonna be Van Vliet, come in as number twenty three. Like, don't. Say, is don't there twenty three on the roster? No, I looked. There's no twenty three. There's twenty two. Wow. Twenty six. He's thirty. No... He's thirty three. Like, bro. Just... Yeah, like the guy yeah, thinks he's Mark Gasol, and thirty three is an awful number for a defenseman. That's a goaltender's number. What are you doing? Number 33 is a D-man. Go 23. You know, there's at least a bunch of 23 defensemen. Alex Edler is the first one that comes to mind for some reason. OEL, I believe. Is OEL 23? Uh, He might be. He might be 23. Um, But 33. Oh, what a what a number. I know these numbers probably. I'm pretty sure just like given to these guys. I don't know if they're actually, uh, if they get to pick them themselves. But that's also true. 
if they well whoever gave it to him it's also a foul on your part because you were in the MLSE uh go with 23 for Noah Van Vliet there's just marketing for marketing purposes that works so That's I looked at his hockey DB uh his uh elite prospects page what a year this guy had last year he went from the El Paso Rhinos in the uh NAHL to the he was with the Hamilton Bulldogs for 11 games and he was also with the Halliburton Con- County Huskies. Like, what a year! The oh, Halliburton, like up here, Halliburton, yeah. The he was in it, was yeah, Halliburton, okay. OJHL. Okay. okay, and now how old is he? He is uh, good question, 20, he's 18. Okay, so an undrafted undrafted player. So they're just getting a sniff at him at prospect camp and uh, see how he, I guess, performs. All right, so Noah Van Vliet is a player who we now have some interest in based on the marquee last name. Could have been better picking the number 23 for obvious reasons, but uh, Noah Van Vliet's definitely somebody who we'll be keeping an eye on. And you and I are both going to come up with a top five for tomorrow's show that we're going to be keeping an eye on for the prospect tournament this upcoming weekend. Uh, but for now, we're going to transition into some cosine, no sign, my friend. And before we get into cosine, no sign, I'll tell you that today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. We are hosts here at Locked On Leafs, a daily Maple Leafs centric podcast. If you haven't listened to us uh, yet, or this is your first time listening to us, rather, hopefully you appreciate the content that we're giving you today. And starting next week, we'll be bringing you content each and every weekday, Monday to Friday, new show. All hockey, all Leafs, all the time. The season's here, folks. So make sure you are subscribed wherever you get your audio podcasts or on YouTube so you can watch us up on, on video if you want to see our well, our ugly mugs, to be quite honest. But sometimes we have some fun. We throw up some fun videos and graphics and whatnot. And we make some interesting faces. So it might be worth a watch as well up on YouTube. Uh, give us a like, subscribe, share it, share the content. That would be Wonderful. Uh, so we're going to play some cosine, no sign, David. And it's a game that I don't think we've actually played in a couple of weeks since before I went away on vacation. So it's been a couple of weeks since we played this one. And for those who are new to the podcast, the way that this works is uh, we're both going to make statements to each other. If we agree with the statement, we cosign. If we disagree, then we no sign and we explain our side and our answers to each other. We both got three in the chamber, David. Why don't you kick this off with your first one? Go ahead. Uh, so my first one is Ilya Samsonov plays more games than Matt Murray for the Leafs next season. Oh, God. Um, it's a tough one. Like, I've been thinking about this one today. I have a goaltending one, too, as, as well. So it's funny. We're kind of on the same wavelength here. But I am actually going to co-sign it. And just strictly because Matt Murray hasn't been healthy the last couple of seasons. And, I mean, can you really roll the the dice that he is going to stay and remain healthy again this season? I, I'm not so sure about that. And then there's also the question of, you know, skill. Is he going to be able to to keep the net? Whereas Simsonov, like, there's some, there's some upside there. It, it, with him there's upside for both of them realistically for being honest with ourselves but there's also big time risk and downside for both but i'm actually going to co-sign it i think samsonov will play more games than matt murray just simply because i'm playing the odds and i think murray will have uh, a couple of injuries along the way maybe not like a big long one where he's going to miss months at a time but a few, you know, five games, six games here and there. And eventually, I think, uh, you know, Simsonov could end up with just a, a couple of games more than Matt Murray when all said and done. So I'll co sign it. I will co sign that. Yeah. The other reason why I thought it too was they want to make sure Matt Murray's good to go for the playoffs too. Yes. Like that's, you don't want the potential, you push Matt Murray a little too much and then something happens and, 
we all know what his record's like in the playoffs. So that's another reason why I thought that as well. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I guess you can ride Samson up into the, you know, through the regular season uh, and then go with the guy who's won in the playoffs afterwards. I guess you could go that route. Or if you hot, to do. Hot hand. Well, yeah, that's like, you're right. Go with the, go with the hot hand. Exactly. You could end up doing that uh, as well. All right, Dave. Um, mine's also a goaltending question. Now, I thought I had this statistic, but it doesn't look like I have it. Hold on one second. I'll I'll find the statistic for you in a second. But essentially, the uh, question is, the tandem of Ilya Samsonov and Matt Murray will finish with a save percentage higher than the Leafs had last season with, I think it was, technically four or five starters they had throughout the year. So will Matt Murray and Samsona finish with a higher save percentage than the Maple Leafs had this past year? And I'll check. I'm pretty sure it's like a 903 save percentage they had. I'm just going to double check it for you. All right. I'm just going to throw it up on the screen here. So that those on YouTube who can see. So, um, I, I think that's very possible. I mean, the Leafs, the Leafs goaltending last year was just, not great. Like I, I, I still think, and I was having a discussion with this with uh, someone I know that is actually he has season tickets, so he watches a lot of Leaf games, especially in person. He's just like there were games last year that goaltending just wasn't there, or they had poor performances against bad teams that really could could have been the difference with the least making the playoffs, right? So I'm I'm actually going to co-sign it just because I think Samsonov is an upgrade on Peter Mrazek. And that's that's a big one right there because Peter Mrazek's stats were very not good. Um no if ends or buts on that one. And then when I, by the way, 899 save percentage the Maple Leafs had uh last year through the regular season. So a 900 or better save percentage is all you got to do. To uh, to eclipse like, last year, even like like Eric Schalgren had a point eight 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 save percentage. Yeah, like the second best. I mean, Joseph will only played four games. We had a point nine eleven save percentage. We also have to remember Michael Hutchinson played two games last year. <clears throat> yeah, he did. So just based on those stats alone, I I do think the Leafs tandem uh, will be better. I mean, Jack Campbell wasn't. It was average. He should have done better. Uh, below the average the last half of the year. Yeah. Actually, so, like Christmas onward, really. Now, I know people are going to be bullish on Matt Murray, but I, I think, I still think the Leafs are a better, look, he's coming to the Leafs after playing for the Senators. I know Anton Forsberg had a good year for the Sens, but he also was playing out of his mind last year, and the pressure wasn't really on him as much as it was probably on Matt Murray. And Matt Murray, I think, is very much even in a bad year. He had a point nine oh six save percentage. So yeah, I, I I think there's a good chance that yeah, we could see a better save percentage just because it was so bad last year. Dude, if this team's save percentage isn't above nine hundred, what are we hey. doing? What are we doing? You know it's what I mean? Like. like it just wouldn't cut it. <laughs> like it's simply put, like I don't know how you can. Go well, that's, just, that's just a big fail by Kyle Dubas, right? Like, that is a massive fail. I don't care how many wins they go out and get. I suppose you can end up winning a bunch of games. But when all is said and done, if if you have to scrape and claw to win every game 6-5 because your goaltending can't keep you in a game or your goaltending can't hold down a lead, I mean, it's, it's concerning, especially once you get to the playoffs and you're taking on the best of the best that's where you need to have good goaltending is in the playoffs. And that's that shows time and time again, right, where, where you just need to have some sound goaltending. Do you have to have the number one star goaltender like, a, you know, like a, a Vasilevsky or a Shesterkin? Not necessarily. But do you have to at least get good goaltending from, from you know, a Darcy Kemper or Pavel Francouz in a, a few games? Yeah, you need to have that. And uh, so, yeah, goaltending is going to be important. But I don't. Like the reason why I asked this question is because it, the fact that the Leafs last year won so many games with 899 goaltending, I feel like a lot of people f- say, oh, the Leafs goalie situation got worse this summer. 
I don't know if that's the case because I, I, I would be shocked if Samsonov and Matt Murray were a sub 900 tandem this year. It's like people forget that, you know, the Leafs goal attending was sub 900 all last season when you compile the whole year, not just the first two months that you remember of Jack Campbell, where he was Vesna caliber. Exactly. No, I, the, I, I just think that when you, when people talk about the goaltending, like it's not like it was stellar. Right. We're not going from a, you know, an amazing goaltending tandem to a worse goaltending tandem. We were going from below average for a lo- most of last season to potentially even average, which is still better. Yeah. Um, let's take one more quick break. When we get back, we'll get our final two cosign no sign questions in here you listen to the locked on these podcasts part of the locked on podcast network welcome back into the locked on lease podcast i'm mike de stefano with dave morissuti we're your hosts here at locked on leaf starting next week folks because the season is basically officially here i mean we get real nhl ish hockey games this week with the prospect tournaments i guess it's not nhl yet but you know, prospect games and tournaments, and then, what, next weekend, I think, the 24th, I want to say, is the first game for the Maple Leafs that they have to play, uh, that they play their first preseason game, I want to say, I believe Saturday, it's Ottawa. Ottawa. One o'clock. Yeah. One o'clock game. One o'clock there's, game. A, a, there's two games. That's, uh, yeah, that's right. I got a wedding that day, so I probably won't be watching either game, to be honest. I'll have to PVR it and kind of catch the game in five afterwards, probably. Weddings are a mess, my friend. Not a mess. They're, they're a lot of fun, but they're busy. Like when you're in a... How many weddings have you been in, Dave? It's, next year will be my first one. When You've never party. been in a wedding. Wow. Never in a wedding party. Okay. So I've been I've been in three previous, and then I my sister's wedding is this weekend. I'm a groomsman. And then next weekend, I'm also a groomsman in one of my childhood... Uh, best friends so back-to-back weekends with weddings for myself it's gonna be a busy busy weekend uh busy couple of weeks actually busy 10 days for uh, for myself but you know they're fun they're a lot of fun but then it, it kind of once we get past the wedding season for me the hockey season starts so it's 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 gonna make hockey season get here quicker because we all know when you have busyness going on everything seems to come so quick and there's not enough time in the day. So in a way, I think hockey season is going to come quick for, uh, for old, old Mike DiStefano here. Mm-hmm. All right. We got two more cosine, no signs that we got. Uh, let's hear your second one, please, Dave. All right. Oh, well, I hope that this is going to serve a little conversation, especially in the comment section. Mm. Comment I- section is fire, by the way. I, I appreciate everybody who is in the comments, even those who throw a little bit of shade. I appreciate the listening click. And at least it sounds like you're, you know, you come back, right? Like, so they must enjoy it. And I like that they have alternate opinions, right? So even if you you don't agree with us in the comment section, still let us know what you got to say. Yeah. Proceed, pal. All right. So mine is ads on NHL jerseys should have happened sooner. No sign are you kidding me did you do we have graphics of oh, this I, i'm i got it queued up man i'm, I'm the, montreal really one? the montreal one no no okay well whichever one uh, the the least potential mock-up years? of what the least one will look like okay so this one would be like if they had scotia bank so the scotia bank it doesn't look i guess it's not as obstructive where that is i suppose but it looks stupid it looks so bad. I didn't think I was going to hate it as much as I do, to be honest. Like, I was always a believer in, yeah, sure, whatever you have to do to increase ad revenue, which increases the cap, increases, you know, the amount of money that players can or that teams can spend on better players to try and improve their team. That was always my thought process. But now I'm looking at this, Dave, and I'm like, no, I don't like it. I'm I got, I guess I got I'm a traditionalist. So, yeah, the Habs one I thought looked way more obstructive. Yeah, look how big that is on the left side, and especially on like the assistants and and the captains. Like now they got little 
patches on both sides of their chest. And if you're just listening to this via the um, your oh, audio yeah. form, I mean, they, they showed this. They sent their captaincy, Nick Suzuki, named captain of the Montreal Canadiens, by the way, if you missed that bit of news. Um, and they've sent out a, a photo with him and his alternates, Joel Edmondson and Brendan Gallagher. And you got the letter on one side and an RBC patch on the other. And they're massive. They're massive, and it's obstructive. This is bigger than I thought it was going to be. It looks so stupid, dude. Why would you put on the jerseys? I was having this conversation with Ross on the Lockdown NHL show, and, and he brought up a good point. He's like, why wouldn't you start with the pants? Like, start with putting something on the backside of your pants or on the leg of your pants as opposed to obstructing your jersey so soon. Like, the helmets, it was it was clean. It actually looked pretty good. I didn't mind it on the helmets. The helmet was fine. The jersey, though, it it does look very Mickey Mouse, man. I I'm not a fan. I understand why they're doing it. Don't get me wrong. Um, I understand the benefits of it, but you know, if if the money portion wasn't part of it, I clearly would rather the jer- the advertisements not be on these jerseys. Yeah, I, no. So I'm gonna make two counterpoints. One, I do believe it should have been on the back of the jersey. Because I think the front. Yeah, why on the front? It, it, like that too. What's on the front? God, it's awful. Now I've seen. If you've seen, there have been some jerseys. You see it in the NFL. You see it in MLB. More in MLB. Nike's logo is on the MLB jersey. Now I understand that Nike makes jersey and it looks. It doesn't look as obtrusive as like an RBC ad does. But we've seen. I've seen it before. Where. Even just the company that makes the jersey has their logo on it. That's why I'm not as it's not Don't, too, too bad. Do they not have it on the back? Like, will it not say? Yeah, I will say Adidas on the back. Adidas on the back. Yeah, yeah. So we've seen it before. That's why I'm like, you won't. It will. You will get used to it after a while. Like at first, you're just like, holy smokes! Like this is way bigger than I thought. And I, I was like that too. But I'm also like you will likely get used to seeing this just like even the, even the helmet ads. Some people are like, what's this? Like, yeah, don't get me wrong. I agree. I think we're blowing it out of proportion today by mid season. No one will even know nor care that these jerseys are on there. I mean, it's like, you're a big CFL guy, right? Mm-hmm. And I mean, the Argos, don't they have a massive sun life uh, patch uh, on their Jersey? It's either sun life or uh, there's a W something whatever it is i know like like there's tim hortons on on the the tie cats jersey used to like, be a big nissan look i'm the raptors a, the raptors have a big massive thing that like, one's sun, that one's sun life i'm a i'm a soccer fan juventus is my italian team it has a jeep logo right on the damn front of it yeah soccer's different though like soccer it's it's embedded into it i mean look at like a lot of teams they're low they're kits are like their logo is the company logo like the new york red bulls their logo is a red bull the team is sponsored by red bull so it makes sense that it Mm -hmm. that it has that right like uve is like that um you can think of a whole bunch of different soccer kits that uh that have it but yeah i don't know man I, i i'm a bit of a traditionalist i don't like the look of it i understand the financial aspect of it but uh ah, i still not a fan like that's, eventually cave but i thought like what the way they did the scotia bank one on the marley's years i'm like okay that's not too big then the rbc one the habs are just like boom we're just gonna throw it out there and wait wait and see what people have to say yeah exactly and i don't think it'll be great things all right dave uh my second one for you the NHL and ESPN messed up royally by only having the Maple Leafs on U.S. national television 14 times, which is just the 18th most. That's only – it's 18th most. There's 17 teams that have more nationally televised games across America than the Maple Leafs. I think that's a massive misstep by the broadcasters. What say you? Co-sign or no sign, Dave? Look, I think the biggest star in the States – arguably is Austin Matthews, right? They're looking, that's how you market the game down in the States is with the best players. Like who is, I didn't even, I can't remember who has the most national games. Do you know? I want to like Vegas was, I think was high up there. Um, 
I'll have to go and check, but I'm trying to remember the, the schedule for how many games I, I had the graphics on when I, yeah, I saw the graphic come out a couple of days ago and I just remember Toronto being there, but I don't remember exactly who else was up there. I think Toronto was 18. Uh, and I think the number one was like, had like 19 or 18 games or something like that. Um, and there was a bunch of teams that had like 18, 16, 15, but Toronto not, leading the way to me is, is, is a little suspect. I mean, aren't you looking to grow the game, grow it with your best American born player in Austin Matthews, especially when you've got Patrick Kane and the Blackhawks going into a rebuild. Yeah, no, that's true. I, I think there it's proven that he, I know that the American markets tend to try to skew towards more American teams. I get that, but I I just think that the Leafs usually are a good draw for most of the American games. That's, that's just from what I've seen. I know that there's certain markets that draw a lot better than others. I heard like Buffalo is one of those that always draws. They have a great uh, market there, but mm-hmm. yeah, like I, I do think Austin Matthews, he is a guy that will always draw just because of what he could, he does in the game and how he sells himself in the media. He does a lot more than a lot of other players do. That's for sure. Yeah. And I know like some of the other locked on hosts that listen to the show, they're rolling their eyes as I say that, but like, let's be honest, a skill sells goal sell and Austin Matthews sells. So all of that is in one place and that's the Toronto Maple Leafs. So not having them higher up on your priority list of, you know, teams to show nationally um, across your country to try and grow the sport, okay. I think is, is a bit of a misstep. I have the answer here. Um, so, sorry, the Leafs only have 11 games. Sorry, I said 14, but it was only 11 games that they have yeah. nationally televised. So it's even worse. So uh, the most <laughs> are the Rangers and the Minnesota Wild and the Penguins at 15. Yeah, and then the Blackhawks, the Avalanche, the Ducks. There's a whole bunch of teams with 14, including the Edmonton Oilers. So clearly, there's a lot of love for uh, Connor McDavid, and McJesus, and I'm just going to mention Habs have zero, zero for the Montreal. Yeah, that is weird, isn't that weird that Montreal has zero games given how big of a team that is? I, I found that quite. I, I found well, that interesting. Winnipeg has a game. Yeah. Ottawa has a game. Who cares about Ottawa? People in Ottawa don't care about Ottawa. <laughs> that's so true. Like, what the heck? Yeah, that's that was bizarre and a little jarring to see that there's and zero LA games. LA at nine. That's that amazing, too. Nine for the Kings. I thought the Kings would be a big draw. Yeah, they should be higher. They should definitely be higher, Um, I would think. I mean, Philly, they're going to stink, but... I guess it's a decent hockey market, I suppose. So yeah. it makes a little bit of sense there. <laughs> like the fact that you're even the fact that you're giving Arizona four games is hilarious. <laughs> That's like, why, why are you a- allowing the Arizona coyotes to be shown on national television? If you're trying to grow the game, they're going to see that and be like, man, these people suck. <laughs> not watch the games anyways but uh yeah so you're with me right you co-signed it that that's a, a big yeah. step by not having the leafs on more yeah i do i yeah. think even florida at seven matthew kachuk another top rated american player not yeah. getting a lot of uh national game coverage yeah all right your third one we gotta roll through these last questions here all right this one hopefully should just be a, an easy yes or no the Leafs should change their goal song for next season. <sighs> to what, David? To what? Honestly, I'm a big Avicii Levels guy. Get the place rocking after a Leaf goal. I like Levels. I like Levels. I don't know how I feel about it as a goal song, though. Like, they play it during commercial breaks and all that. Yeah, but I like a goal song. I, I just think if there's a song that gets the crowd going, it's that one. I've seen like I'm a big levels. If like I'm not a big EDM guy, but levels always does it for me. Yeah, I, I'm I'm gonna no sign it, man. I'm 
I, dude, I think I. I just I'm think Hall and Oates. I'm Team Hall and Oates. I'm gonna know I, it. I just find it's it's tired. It's been done for a dude, while now. I still get jacked up every time here. Dan, 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 dan. Like I get jacked up. I do, man. I still think it's a quality song, and I think that it gets people dancing. Like, it's a groovy song. You know what I mean? Like, it gets the hips moving, and you start swaying back and forth. And We're going you know, to talk to the TSM producers, and when the Leafs score, they got to find you in the crowd, and they got to find you dancing. Just dance yeah. it, dude. How, you can't move your hips in that way, like, da, 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 and not smile. You're at a hockey game. Smile. Have, you're having a blast. I, I am a much bigger fan of that song than most, I know. Um, and I still I, like that song. I know how to play the song on this piano over here. That's can you do it right now? Not if we want to get copyrighted by YouTube. <laughs> can you play like eight seconds of it? Uh, I have to have it all set up. I don't ne- oh. next time. Next time. Next time we'll get a live rendition of the first eight seconds of uh of some hollow notes by david morissuti on the show so make sure that you return for tomorrow's episode so we can get that all right uh my final one for you justin hall will play more games as a toronto maple leaf this season than rasmus sandin wow um i'm going to no sign I'm going to no sign because I think they want to see Rasmus Sandin take that step forward. I think Justin Hall lost a bit. Um, I think Justin Hall lost a bit of cachet last season. Like he was, he was benched more than I thought he was going to be. And I think the only reason why he got into the playoffs was because Sheldon Key felt he needed to make that change. And I thought that was actually the wrong choice. So I think the Leafs didn't really look as good. After they make that made that change, I thought the Leafs were much better to start the series, and then their play kind of tailed off and was less offensively driven than it should have been. Yeah. So I I think Rasmus Sand. Now the problem is is that's dependent on if Rasmus Sandy plays on the right side, and if he doesn't, that makes it really hard for him to play games. Right. Which is why this question I think is. A worthwhile one because then you, it makes you think is he going to go to the first of all is Rasmus Sandin going to sign a contract David because if he doesn't well, sign a contract I, he ain't going to play a single game for this team which means Justin Hall will play more games unless he also gets traded before the season starts so I suppose the answer could be they both play the same amount which could be goose eggs I suppose that's an answer but uh, I, did you so you're no signing it I'm going to no sign it just because I think Justin Hall either get can get traded or they might consider Rasmus Sandin on the right side to get him I'm, into the lineup. I'm going to co-sign it. I'm going to co-sign it. I don't think Justin Hall is as bad a player as people think he is. Um, not that I think that he's like a top pair defenseman by any stretch. I don't even think he's a top four defenseman, but I think he's a perfectly fine third pair guy. Uh, he plays a role on this team that Rasmus Sandin can't fill in those shoes. Nobody can. Nobody's six foot four, you know, two hundred and fifteen pounds who can block shots. Go find me another defenseman on this roster that's willing to do that, Dave. There isn't one. And that's kind of the problem. And you can't have a bunch of five foot nine, five foot ten, you know, undersized guys who can't really. I mean, Sandy's not the greatest skater either. Like he's a good player, he's cerebral, he's a smart player, but he's not a great skater. He doesn't have good size. I'm also not a believer that Rasmus Sandin is going to be there for training camp, and he could hold out for a little bit. And if that's the case, he's going to miss games. And then when he does come back, it's going to take him a little bit to get in. And then it'll be, again, a, a filter of Hall, Sandine, uh, Lilligren are going to be battling an little internal battle. Two will play, one will not. And I think that Hall will will play, you know, some games uh, over Sandine and Lilligren this year when people are going to be upset about it when one of those two are going to end up in the press box, but I think it's going to happen barring a trade. I really do. Just because he does 
a lot more for this team than people think. Like he's a big part of this team's penalty kill. He really is. Like this guy eats pucks for breakfast. He is a great shot blocker on the PK, and he at least has some size to play around with guys in front of the net where you can't say the same for Rasmus Sandin, who will get bullied out in front of the goal. Um, so I'm I'm going to coast that. I think Hall plays more games than Sandin this year with the Maple Leafs. We shall see. We shall see. That's correct. We shall see, and uh, we shall listen to you play some hollow notes tomorrow on that piano right behind you, my friend. So make sure that you're subscribed here on the Locked on These podcast and check back for a new episode of the show. That's going to do it for us here today on the pod. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You'd subscribe to Locked on These podcast on all podcast platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Follow the show at Locked on Leafs. And please Go ahead, uh, leave a like and a comment on YouTube. Subscribe, hit the notification bell for brand new videos coming at you each and every day of uh, the week. We'll be back with another episode tomorrow. It's somewhat of a game day. It's going to be somewhat of a game day tomorrow. The prospect tournament will uh, will commence. It'll start tomorrow tomorrow night, I believe, is uh, puck drop 7-ish, I think is the time. So it's going to start tomorrow. And you and I are going to go through, do a little bit of a, a top five players we're watching, preview the tournaments a little bit, and uh, get you all set for the tournament this upcoming weekend. So make sure that you're back with us tomorrow. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On